I'm here to talk about perfectionism. It can make or break you. Coming from my first career as a performer, it took a lot of joy out of my experiences. And I can tell you now, as an educator, my perfectionism has pretty much been cured. For example, during COVID, we were, I was on a screen with a bunch of kindergartners, first graders, and I remember I had a first grader who liked to model everything under the sun in her room, her nails, her hand sanitizer, a tape dispenser, everything. And it was it's very easy as teachers to reprimand and cut kids off like that. You can redirect in a way that doesn't squash his creativity, so he doesn't he's not afraid the next time to do something creative or have an idea to share. I try to compliment and then bring them back to the place where they need to be. I had a kindergarten class and we were doing a song called Turkey on a Hill and I had one boy stuffing cheese doodles in his mouth and I asked him several times to put the snack away because we don't have music and snack at the same time in school and he could hurt himself by choking and singing and at one point he actually was using alternating hands to fill his entire mouth with cheese doodles but it was on the beat Turkey on a Hill Turkey on a Hill so I had to compliment him what about the boy who takes the sand blocks or clappers that are supposed to be moving like this and he puts them on his chest like a defibrillator? Again, pretty creative. So teachers remember that really there's nothing perfect. And when you do have everything going right in your classroom, it's a moment of pure, utter lusciousness and joy but it comes very infrequently. And good enough is good enough for a day, for a lesson. So keep that in mind and keep your teacher hearts happy when you've got a kid who's really <laughs> going off. But just remember that there's really nothing perfect in the world except the perfect teacher that can support creative ideas of children whether they bomb your lesson or not.